LoRaWAN is by far the most reliable long-range communication protocol due to its easy integration with IoT devices and robust communication. Today in this video, I will be sharing with you guys a simple system that I have designed that gets powered from a solar panel and shares the connected battery voltage level and the environment temperature information with the Thing network over LoRaWAN. We will also learn about LoRaWAN communication classes. We have got a lot of work to do today, so without any further ado, let's jump on in. Turn your dream project into reality with PCBWay. I've personally used their services to produce my own prototype for future IoT projects. Ordering your own PCB has never been easier before with a lot of features. They also have open source community, so there are many projects to have a look at. Link is in the description. Okay, so here's the setup uh, of my project. As you can see here, I'm using ESP node. Uh, the development board that I've designed before, it has ESP32 C2, one of the uh, low-cost uh, MCUs of Espressif. And I have it connected over UART uh, to this LoRaWAN module, RYLR993 LoRaWAN module uh, from Reax. Uh, and here I have a buck converter that's going to convert uh, the battery voltage. I'm using 18650 lithium ion battery so it's going to be converted to 3.3 volt so I can power up my system uh, also here I'm using uh, a voltage divider as you can see here in order to let my MCU uh, read the uh, voltage level of the battery so I can uh, report this uh, over LoRaWAN network so I can have an idea uh, about uh, the battery uh, information so the LoRaWAN module also contains an internal uh, temperature sensor so I can make use of that uh, in order to get information related to the uh, surrounding temperature and of course uh, the uh, LoRaWAN module is going to be broadcasting over uh, 868 MHz uh, bandwidth uh, of course I have my uh, LoRaWAN gateway on another place uh, and here's the antenna that I'm using uh, and of course here I'm using uh, this uh, 3D printed case the other side of the case uh, will have the battery this is the battery that I have and here is a battery charging circuit uh, and at the back of the uh, case I have a solar panel so I can charge my battery uh, when I put uh, the whole device uh, in sun so what I need to do is to hook up the output of the uh, charging circuit uh, to this buck converter in order to power my system so this is what I'm going to do uh, but first let me show you uh, how the system uh, works uh, here I have it uh, connected to my power supply let me turn it on okay so right now uh, the module uh, starts blinking I'm waiting for LoRaWAN uh, network join command uh, and here I have my phone uh, on the Thing Network uh, console so I can uh, view the packets that are traveling uh, over LoRaWAN okay so right now I have uh, my LoRaWAN module uh, have joined the uh, LoRaWAN network uh, and once a while uh, here I can see a new packet being pushed uh, to the Thing Network uh, when a packet uh, is uh, sent by the module uh, there's an LED behind it will be turned on and here you can see the packets uh, sent so i have uh, two different types of packets uh, the one that contains two bytes uh, is the uh, battery voltage that's connected uh, to this uh, voltage divider and the one that consists of one single byte uh, is the uh, temperature uh, value that's being read uh, from the internal temperature sensor of the lora one module so the value right now is 1 AX, which is uh, uh, 26 in decimal, 26 degrees. Uh, and this is the uh, value. Actually, what I want to do in the future uh, is to obtain this data from a Raspberry Pi and display it uh, on a TFT screen. So I can have uh, a good uh, view of the data that's being sent uh, to the uh, thing network there's one more thing i want to show you guys here uh, is that in the messaging part uh, i can send the data 
from the Thing Network to the LoRaWAN uh, module, and I've actually configured my MCU uh, to turn on and off uh, pins depending on the received packet. So let me hook up uh, an LED to test uh, this feature. So here I have configured uh, this pin 3. Let's connect it this way. So here, uh, if I write 3, and then uh, the state uh, of the GPIO pin, 1. So as you can see, I could turn on the LED uh, or using the Thing Network packet. So now I can turn it off. Uh, so uh, actually I'm using uh, class A. So once packet is being pushed to the Thing Network, the Thing Network uh, will respond with a packet that is uh, scheduled as downlink. So as you can see right now, the packet was received and the ESP32 turned off uh, the connected LED. Okay, so here's the uh, battery charging circuit uh, that I'm using in my system. So the heart of this circuit is the uh, TP4056 board. Uh, that will take uh, the voltage th that will take its input from any voltage source either from USB uh, or from a solar panel that I'm using over here. I'm using a 1 watt uh, 5 volt uh, solar panel uh, and then it will convert it to a voltage uh, that's suitable for charging battery. So here I'm using the uh, lithium ion battery 18650 uh, battery. Of course when uh, the whole system is exposed to the uh, sunlight uh, the charging uh, of the battery will start. So now let's move on to the next uh, circuit diagram which will show the rest of the system components. So the battery will be connected to this uh, buck converter that will drop the uh, battery voltage that can be between uh, 3.7 to 4.1 volt uh, to 3.3 volt that is suitable to power my system components and they are the ESP32C2 uh, and the RYLR 998 LoRa1 module uh, and of course you may have noticed that uh, the battery voltage is connected to this voltage divider uh, so I can let uh, the MCU so I can let the MCU read the battery voltage uh, and uh, report it uh, over LoRaWAN network so I can have an idea uh, about the uh, battery voltage level and there's one more feature that this uh, LoRaWAN module has uh, is that it contains an internal uh, temperature sensor so I can also obtain uh, the temperature related information uh, over UART uh, with this connection of course using uh, AT commands. In my system I will be using the Thing Network uh, in order to uh, send the data uh, over LoRaWAN network to the server but of course the LoRaWAN module uh, that I'm using also support uh, Chirpstack uh, and Helium networks so it's compatible with the both uh, networks. All right, so now it's time to jump into the code and see how everything uh, works together. Okay, so right now I have uh, the Thing Network uh, console is opened so I can see the packets that are being sent over LoRaWAN uh, displayed over here. So here I can see uh, the battery voltage packet and after that uh, I have the uh, environment uh, temperature packet that consists of one byte. So as you can see now, as uh, the time passes, uh, new packets are uh, being printed on the console and here on the upper side I have the logic analyzer being hooked up to the uh, UART line TX and RX uh, of the ESP32 that I have uh, that's uh, connected to the LoRa module that I have RYLR993 uh, LoRa1 module from uh, Reax so now if we stop the logic analyzer and uh, let me stop the module so no more packets being sent over LoRa1 so now the system is stopped so let's zoom into this part. Uh, so here uh, I'm obtaining the temperature value uh, from the sensor. And then here I'm sending the uh, battery voltage over LoRaWAN network uh, E20D hex. Uh, and we can see uh, the same packet is being received uh, over here. Uh, and after some time, after sending the first packet, here I can see the other packet being sent uh, 1A hex. And here it is on the Think Network console. So I have my system sending continuously the battery voltage and the temperature data uh, to the console, as you can see. All right, so here's the firmware that's running on the ESP32C2 uh, in my case. Of course, if you have any other MCU, 
you can still apply what I've implemented here uh, just let me increase the size of the uh, font okay this uh, okay this is better so let's start with the main uh, where I am configuring the UART uh, in order to communicate with the uh, LoRa 1 module uh, and here I'm configuring the uh, analog to digital converter uh, so I can read uh, the voltage level of the battery with the help of the connected uh, voltage divider as we have seen uh, in the hardware uh, and after that uh, we can see that the module uh, is getting initialized so to the uh, module initialization function uh, I'm passing the send uh, function where I'm actually doing nothing but passing the uh, obtained data uh, to the UART uh, transmission buffer so it's transmitted later on when the uh, MCU is ready and of course everything is handled uh, with free RTOS and the other function that I'm passing is the uh, system callback so uh, this function uh, will be called whenever a packet is received so here in the system LoRa1 callback uh, I am actually uh, taking different action depending on the received packet so for example here I'm storing the data uh, that's related to the temperature as I've mentioned before the LoRa1 module contains an internal temperature sensor so I'm making use of that uh, and the other packet is the uh, pin control this packet will be handled whenever uh, a packet is received over LoRaWAN from the gateway uh, to the module in order to set or reset one of the MCU pins uh, just like we have done with uh, turning on and off uh, the L connected LED okay let's get back to the uh, module initialization function and see what we have done inside alright so as you can see uh, first I'm initializing uh, a queue in order to store uh, the form that AT commands so they are uh, sent uh, when the module is ready and here I'm storing the uh, function pointers of the past uh, functions and then I'm setting the parameters in order to let my module communicate with the TTA network so here in the band I'm using the uh, European 868 uh, megahertz uh, band and the other functions are related to the uh, device unique ID, application unique ID, network ID and application key and when all these parameters are set LoRa1 network join a request uh, is sent of course all the functions that I've mentioned will use the uh, AT command make function in order to form the AT command to let communicating with the module uh, possible just like we have seen uh, in the uh, logic analyzer where the AT commands were being exchanged between the MCU and the uh, module so uh, this library is dedicated for communicating with the LoRa1 module and it's good documented so I'm not going to go through it uh, one thing I want to mention and it's actually important that's uh, related to the uh, LoRa1 standard it's the uh, class of communication uh, usually in LoRa1 there are three classes of communication and they are class A, B and C so in my application I'm actually using uh, class A uh, in LoRa1 communication uh, let me discuss the uh, differences between the classes in LoRa1 so we have uh, class A, B and C so in class A if there are uh, scheduled downlink messages they can be only sent uh, after uh, sending uplink packets by the end device which is the LoRa1 module in our case uh, and other than that the device can go into deep sleep mode and we have actually seen that uh, in the demonstration the downlink packet could only reach the device uh, after sending uh, uplink packet because our device was sending uh, uplink packet every 30 uh, seconds and in class B there will be specific periods uh, where the end device can receive downlink packets uh, from the uh, connected network so both class A and class B uh, are good choice uh, for devices that run with battery on the other hand in class C uh, the device can receive a downlink packet uh, from the network at any time and it may be connected to uh, an external power supply okay so let's get back to our code so after completing the configuration stage uh, the uh, free RTOS tasks uh, are created so f here I'm so here the uh, UART event task is created the uh, UART transmission task UART reception analog digital converter handling and here uh, this task is uh, running uh, once every one second where I'm getting the reading of the uh, battery voltage and storing it in the system variable so if we get back to the tasks 
so uh, and then the system tasks let's jump into it so in the system task uh, which is running once every uh, 30 seconds the temperature value is updated uh, and then uh, the obtained data of the uh, battery voltage and the temperature and the obtained uh, battery voltage and temperature values are sent to the uh, LoRaWAN module in form of AT commands as you can see here these functions uh, are used to convert the obtained data uh, into AT commands so here the past values are converted into AT commands uh, using sprint if function and then passed to the uh, related uh, queue so it's sent whenever the uh, MCU is available. Alright, so this brings me to the end of this tutorial. Of course, all the uh, codes and the materials related to this tutorial uh, are shared uh, on my GitHub repository. You can have a look at it uh, and uh, check the code, maybe develop it and work on it. If you have learned something new, please subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. Tell your friends about Tusor Electronics. See you in the upcoming tutorial and bye bye.